summer I spent a lot of time practicing for the World Championship of Public Speaking. And at some, if not all, of those events, I was very clear about my purpose for going to the World Championship of Public Speaking. Because it's considered the right thing to say, I am going there to give the audience a message, I am going there to move people. And I was very clear when I sent the message, I am going there to win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, a lot of times you get to learn something and you're lost. I didn't want to learn, I wanted to win. I wanted to be the one person who is just as dumb at the end as I was at the start, but I had a big shiny trophy. <laughs> well, we all now know that I did get a little shiny trophy. <laughs> in my semi-final, especially shiny, because I, I win things every day. <laughs> statement that is false turn into a lie. Because in addition to that statement, I made another statement for those of you who are Facebook friends and those of you who aren't, don't hurt you. On Facebook, I said, about a month before the contest itself, this is my last <laughs> speech contest. <laughs> <laughs> Thought being, A, I'm not having as much fun this year as I thought I might at that point. Forgetting that every single year in a speech contest you go through this. Second thought being that if I say this is the last one, then I'll force myself to win it because you can never compete again once you win it. So let's relax. <laughs> so let's address the second question first. When did that become a lie? On the way home at McDonald's. Again, on Facebook I noted, because everybody has all their brilliant revelations in McDonald's, right? <laughs> this group is bad. But, I. It, when I pulled into McDonald's, I actually had it earlier, but my wife was sleeping in the car. I didn't want to wake her up and go, honey, honey, I'm going to compete next year. That wouldn't have been good. But I said, <laughs> as we stopped at McDonald's, I said, I've made a decision about competing next year. And she goes, oh, okay. <laughs> the answer is I'm going to compete next year, and here's why. <clears throat> it gets back to the first question, and it gets back to what happened in Chicago. We now move to the Thursday of the speech conference. On Wednesday in the speech contest, it's like any other speech contest where you draw a proposition. It's unlike any other speech contest because there's 100 people in the room and 97 of them have a question about timing, lights, timing and lights, and other, other assorted questions that the Toastmasters employees bravely, bravely answer before they probably draw it for a mark or get this big. I know I would. <laughs> At any rate, on Thursday, we start the competition. On Wednesday, I had drawn the 10 of clubs, which meant I got to go 10 out of the 11 speakers in the competition. That's good and that's bad. What's good about it is you get to see your competition. What's bad about it is you get to worry about your competition. The person who went third had a very well-received speech, and he's using a lot of humor, and, and the audience is eating it up. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, I was supposed to be the one with the humor in this contest. <laughs> no one. <clears throat> the fourth speaker gets up. I wonder if I could change my speech. Because the speech you've been practicing all summer long, the really smart thing to do is change it within 30 minutes of giving it for a trophy. <laughs> By the fifth one, I was like, yeah, yeah, I could change it. Because if you remember, when I started the speech, I spread out my blanket and I sat down on the beach. And I thought, well, I wonder what would happen if I laid down on the beach. Now, you cannot do that in the room while other people are speaking. They don't allow it. I, I don't know if it's in the rules, but I'm fairly certain you get in trouble for doing that. <laughs> so I said, well, to do this, I have to leave the room and practice out in the hall. You can only do that when somebody else is speaking. You are on the speaker's five, and I'm going to have to do it. Besides that, i got to go to the bathroom. And I can't do it on speakers eight or nine because... At the end of speaker eight, I need to go backstage, and on nine, they're going to be hitting me with the microphone. So I'm left with two choices, six or seven. I said, all right, I'm going out on the next speaker, speaker number six, because just in case it doesn't work, I'm going to need two speakers worth of time to sit on the floor and figure out what to do. Speaker number six, for those of you who haven't seen it, was Ramona J. Smith, the lady who beat me and then won the world championship in public speaking. Oh, I think second is, well, if she beat me, I have no idea what her speech was about. <laughs> so I went out in the hall, 
and there are people guarding the doors who are watching the freaks like me who are out there practicing their speech. And I said, well, let's try it. So I, well, this isn't bad. Well, what if we went all the way back down? I'm like, no, that's pretty lousy. So I finally decided on this. And if you saw the speech, it really worked. <laughs> the coaches were like, what the heck did you do? <laughs> but it worked. And what happened was, the audience started laughing right away. And it became like a giant seven minute and 10 second conversation with the audience. And every time I said something, they laughed, they liked it. I even got some applause. And when I got up the stage, I said, that was great. I loved it. I had the time of my life. I finished second. Later that day, I'm walking between the hotel and the convention center, and a man comes up to me to the side and says, I saw your speech. I don't know this guy. I still don't know his name. <laughs> he said, let me ask you something. When you perform, when you practice your speech, do you look at the judges for him? I said, no, never. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> until I got to about the end of the other home, I said, no, no, I don't. Because if I do that, I'm going to be focused on winning the trophy. But, but wait a minute, wasn't that what I was supposed to be focused on? You mean to tell me it was more important to connect with the audience and communicate and tell a great story than checking the boxes on the judges' form? Turns out the trophy wasn't the big thing. And it's not going to be next year. That's not true. I'll check the judges for next year. <laughs> but that moment gave me the clarity that the number one thing I was after was what I actually accomplished. Connecting with the audience and delivering a message. And so next year, when I attempt to go to Denver, guess what? I'm going to try and connect with the audience and deliver a message. And if I get a big shiny trophy, that's going to be great.